Hey all, I've got exciting news. Uh, I'm very happy to finally announce that my film The Sudbury Devil will be available to stream worldwide on the winter solstice, December 21st, 2023, which is nice and witchy, uh, exclusively at first through my website, atunshefilms.com, together with hours of special features and behind the scenes material. And yeah, I'm imitating Louis C.K. Uh, in one very specific way only, and doing the self-distribution thing. I'd like to explain why, uh, because I think my story could be really illuminating for a lot of other independent filmmakers at a time when our art form and our industry is undergoing uh, drastic change. So The Sudbury Devil is a weird production. Uh, we are micro-budget and we're non-union, but uh, we've always had a built-in audience, namely, you know, 350,000 of my closest friends who watch me on YouTube. And that's always sort of set us apart, and it's always given us a bit of a leg up in terms of our market potential. And uh, sure enough, uh, pretty much as soon as we stopped filming, um, I got approached by several distribution companies uh, who wanted to talk and, and were kind of eager to get into bed with me. My strategy with these companies was stupidly simple. Uh, I basically said, look, you know, we have both a film and an already established eager audience that we can guarantee with absolute certainty is going to see this film in large numbers. All we need is a platform, and whatever platform takes us is pretty much guaranteed to make a large amount of money for basically no cost and no effort. Which seemed like an unbeatable pitch, but uh, in actually talking to these companies, you'd think that I was speaking Martian. Uh, instead, they, without fail, asked for retainer fees in the thousands of dollars, in addition to 30% of gross profits on the film. Now, the way that this probably ought to work is that the distributor would pay the filmmaker for the rights for their movie, especially if that filmmaker comes with a built-in audience of hundreds of thousands of people. The 30% is pretty standard, but uh, an upfront retainer fee, when we would be the ones making them money long-term, um, yeah, no. Uh, there was no way I was going to do that, and no filmmaker should ever have to do that. I began to strongly suspect that the business model of these companies was not to make sound investments or build a brand. It was to take advantage of micro-budget filmmakers by charging an exorbitant upfront fee for films that, unlike ours, are pretty much guaranteed to never make a profit organically. Um, and entrusting our film with such people kind of felt like leaving a baby with a cave bear. The whole thing kind of gave me flashbacks to uh, film festival submissions when I was in my 20s. I sank hundreds of dollars at a time into submissions because I had been told, you know, from film school in every professional setting imaginable, you know, got to get your, your shorts into festivals. You know, that's where indie filmmakers get seen. That's where they get discovered. Um, mostly, though, I just got a big old stack of rejection emails. And when my movies did screen, nothing happened. And I quickly kind of started to realize, you know, wow, I'm putting a lot of money into, <laughs> you know, these people are taking a lot of my money and I'm not getting anything out of it, just kind of vague promises. And I started to think that the whole thing was kind of a bit of a racket. When you pay to play, the house always wins. And hey, that's why I started posting things to YouTube initially, it was because the thing that everybody told me to do to become a working filmmaker seemed to be failing by design, so I decided to try something else. Legacy media tends to think of YouTubers as amateurs and dipshits, and uh, while that's undeniably true, uh, the number of eyeballs that we command is nonetheless a force to be fucking reckoned with, and those eyeballs have tangible market value. What's more, Hollywood seems to be pretty delusional about how much cultural capital they're currently hemorrhaging, and the line between old media and new media is rapidly blurring. These days, the YouTube app on your TV is right up there with the streaming services of the great studios of the golden age of Hollywood. You might get recommended an Atun Shea video right next to the new Ridley Scott film. There are skippable ads on Star Wars movies. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, for a while there, Stephen Colbert was filming The Late Show on a webcam. It's a brave new world. Any of these distributors that we were talking to would have been extremely fortunate to have us. And I don't say that out of ego. I I'm talking in a very sober, objective, dollars and cents kind of way. But they either lacked the imagination to see how much they would have benefited, or they were just cynically trying to squeeze us. 
nonetheless, uh, I think this is sort of emblematic uh, of an industry that is using obsolete uh, and inflexible business models at a time of uh, huge industry-wide chaos and uh, profound cultural change. But the flip side is, I don't actually strictly need a distributor. I have a film and I have an audience. You don't need anything more than that to have a good time. But what really pushed me over the edge to self-distribute was the fiduciary duty that I have to my cast and crew who helps me make this film. Uh, so the Sudbury Devil is a co-op. Basically, the core cast and crew did not take any money up front for the film. Instead, they agreed to uh, significant percentages of the films, uh, of, of Atunche Films, you know, LLCs, uh, a gross revenue from the film. I only make 14% of the profits of my own movie. The 10 people in the core cast and crew make between 5 to 10%, depending on their workload and the number of days they were on set. Also, the visual effects artist and the composer make 1% and 2% respectively uh, as a gesture of gratitude and, and fairness because they agreed to work on lower rates than they normally would for love of the project. If we went with the distributor, not only would we have to pay them 30%, but also Amazon, Vudu, Google Play, uh, you know, Tubi or whatever would also take their cut. That would not translate to a very large amount of money on an individual level for me and my company of players. However, by self-distributing Louis C.K. style through a online store set up on my website, I only have to pay 10% to Vimeo for hosting the video files on their servers. We're putting the film up for rent for $9.99 and purchase for $19.99. If, say, uh, 30,000 of you fine YouTube people rent it, in the short term, you know, right after the release, subtracting Vimeo's 10%, uh, that's $270,000. Now, my producer Veronica, cinematographer Eduardo, and star Benton, who each make 10% of Atunche Films' gross profits from the film, would then get $27,000 each. Even knocking off a few grand for tax, that is a life-changing amount of money. And honestly, I think that's a pretty conservative estimate. And I know the price is steep, but it's steep for that reason. Um, if you've seen the film in theaters, you know what a phenomenal job this, this cast and crew did. <laughs> There's not a lot coming around the bin after that one. No, we gotta get go going. They deserve to be compensated well for it. But I also understand that not everybody can afford that, not everybody can justify that expense, and uh, for those people, I'm just gonna put the movie up on Pirate Bay myself uh, at some point in the near future after the release on December 21st. But please don't be shitty. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you can buy the film, please do. Most of the money does not go to me. It goes to this amazing team of very talented and underappreciated artists who, if there was any justice in the world, would already be super famous. Also, the special features aren't going to be on Pirate Bay, so there you go. And they're going to be sick. And I don't think this will be like the be-all, end-all, only way to watch the movie ever. Um, I'm sure at some point it will end up on another streaming service. Uh, I would be particularly interested, kind of my ideal scenario, would be selling it non-exclusively to like a smaller boutique streamer that's, that's more in line with our vision preferably one that's genre-specific, where I'm sure we could very easily find a whole new audience of goths and Tumblr girlies and weirdos. But for now, uh, self-distribution feels right. It gives us so much more freedom, and I've come to really enjoy the direct connection to audiences that uh, I've been able to foster here on YouTube. For a film of this size, we have done exceptionally well for ourselves just going it alone and doing things completely independently. Our roadshow was a huge success. We packed most of those theaters, and not just with Atun Shea fans. I really see no reason that that shouldn't continue. And with no gods, no masters, no corporate overlords, uh, we have a lot more control over the fruits of our labor than we normally would. For, you know, any independent filmmakers who are trying to learn from this experience, I would just say that uh, waiting around to get discovered is a losing strategy. Um, even though the internet is dystopian and shitty, there is a democratizing element to it. And there's an opportunity in this changing media landscape to 
forge new business practices that are more ethical and equitable than uh, Hollywood ever was. The entire rollout of the Sudbury Devil has been extremely experimental, and maybe, you know, at the end of the day, we won't succeed. But clearly, we need to be doing something much differently as independent filmmakers. And, you know, as the craft is becoming more and more the provenance of bloated tentpole movies and bland, inoffensive streaming shows, in a lot of ways, it's us sort of low-budget freaks who are uh, holding the candle of cinema and keeping that flame alive. We need to be smart, subversive, and tactical in utilizing the tools and techniques of new media to, one, find audiences so we can eat, two, shepherd the art form through this uncertain time of upheaval and change, and three, transform it into something that isn't just something that we've seen before, that isn't just the old 20th century, you know, model of a movie. Uh, transforming it into something that, that reflects and resonates with this new world that we find ourselves in. Anyway, thank you all for being so patient with me throughout this whole distribution process. Uh, I promise the film will be worth the wait and the hype. I've been taking a little bit of a break from YouTube recently, but uh, production on regularly scheduled programming is uh, going full speed ahead very soon. We've got new ab uh, episodes of The Abolitionists and The Birth of an American Town that are in the pipe. And in January, we are starting pre-production on the Checkmate Lincolnites finale, which is going to be a heartbreaker. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. See you on the solstice.